Hey guys, it's Ryan and this week is a video on four lists for Tunguska. This is a pretty standard list overview video. I'll talk about the contents of each list, how to use them, and the purpose of each piece in that list and its role. Like my other videos, I will be posting the army codes below. If you have your own cool list, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, remember to like and subscribe for more. It really helps the channel out. First list, and to be honest, it's a fairly standard one, which is how we should start. Its main features are the Impure Core, two bikers, Dima, a Vertigo Zond, and of course, the Salamandra Tag. If you've seen my last list video from last year, links in the cards, I tend to run through the common stuff first so I don't repeat myself and end up with a 14 minute video. Again, so the basic stuff. Faction Engineer with bots to obviously pick up the tag and the warband if it goes down. The Puppet Master sans bots gives us an order and counterintelligence for 12 points, which is really nice and something that separates Tunguska a little from the other nomads. It means your opponent's command tokens don't go as far if you go first and ram the tag, Dima, or the bikes into them. It also means your opponent can't strip order from both groups. Transductor zones give us some soft ARO and drop zone repeaters, which is nice to have, and the war core does something very similar. So on to the less structural units, but still really important core stuff, like the core fire team, Heckler and Vertigo zone, which all nicely dovetail together. So the core is what I consider pretty standard impure core for Tunguska. Interventor for some really solid hacking with three secure tates, one lieutenant slash one decoy filler, and one paramedic which is a nice solid core three models to build around. They rock whip 14 with veteran orders with BS12 medkips to pick up most things in the core. Finally is the Granzer Sniper. It's here for good reason. It's really tricky thing to approach with its BS14 multi sniper and MSV1. So you can outrange it or smoke it out. The Grenzer has burst 2 in ARO with marksmanship, so that's BS 17. It's a bit flimsy, but really you need a tag or min minus 6 in good shooting to take on without getting bodied. It's a solid defensive core, but the Grenzer has only got one wound with armor 3, so you're really hoping to consistently outshoot your opponent, either win or not lose enough to drop prone either conscious or unconscious. With 6 cents, your opponent has to avoid you or take you on to smoke or albedo, just won't work. Now on to the Heckler and the Vertigo Zone, which enable the Inventor and the other hackers to make the guided missile strike work. That's why the Vertigo Zone is here, pretty much exclusively to strike people and provide an order to Group 2. Heckler is also a warband and skirmisher killer with that jammer and combi rifle, but I think in this list, if the Grenzer and the Salamander can't really assault it, the Heckler could come in and throw down the Fast Panda and set up a strike. Onto the bigger guns, we'll start with the biggest, the Salamandra. It's a big tag with 10 orders, a big gun with arm 8 and BTS 9. It is here to run around and find the opponent's main IRO piece, be it Phoenix, Girls, Teutonic Knight Missile Launcher, and just lay 5 shots, damage 16 to until it goes prone or dead or you run out of orders, which is more likely to be the first option to be honest. Once you've softened up your opponent, you can push the Salamandra or more cautiously use some of the secondary pieces to get the mission done if you decide to spend all of the orders on the Salamandra, the pilot is a specialist and could pop out behind the tag, outside line of fire and push a button. A really all-in-one piece, but it's a lot of point and your main burst greater than 4 gun. So you'll need to be a little careful. When a path is clear, regardless, you have 3 options to follow up in the gap. 2 warband style units and 1 specialist. Dima and your motorized bounty hunter are the warband ones. Dima only has five orders and his impetus to walk up into the midfield and maybe hurt something. It will at least set you up for next turn. Metaken could give him a really solid boon that makes him more efficient, but this is really his main use is maybe turn one waiting for stuff to move and then running in to deal with it or to smoke out routes so the tag bikers or heckler can advance easier. That brings us on to the motorized bounty hunter who has more orders to play with than Dima and can move very quickly with some close range weapons and booty to act as a warband in his stead. They are 8-6 so they go like the clappers and with a chain call that could take on some skirmishers or try and push into the enemy's drop zone to hunt their squishy order generators. They are not specialists so don't worry about running after buttons with them. At 9 points the motorized bounty hunter is pretty disposable and with 2 orders to herself feel free to use them recklessly. A specialist biker and kind of the fluff slash fun choice in this list is the Zonautica Hacker, which has two uses. 
fast specialist to do the mission, or as a drop zone guard with a chain rifle and zone of controls AROs. Do you want a spotlight, chain rifled, or shot? Nasty fork here. Anyway, they are like the motorized bounty hunter to follow in the wake of the salamandra and to be fast. They are impetuous, but with only five orders you want to quickly do what you need to do. They're decently durable too, with arm 3, min minus 3. You should probably last long enough to do the mission. Overall, the plan with this list is very much use the big guns or smoke to allow your more specialized pieces to do damage or take objectives. The tag is a key part of this list and will need some minor protection, but you have plenty of bulk and firepower to throw that around and can sit back and lob shots or push forward as required. However, the bulk of your mission will be done with the Zonautica or Salamandra pilot. This list is a bit light on options and it's one I recommend trying and then modeling around with the groups to suit your playstyle. The Salamandra could easily be swapped with the Zonautica or Dima to move to a less active but still prominent fire support role. An additional gun would be a good buff to this list though. It's a nice and simple beginner list. This list is called Red Panel and for good reason, it's a light infantry corps with BS-15, a burst 6 heavy machine gun, super jumping missile launcher to take out any pieces that are dug in and act as a secondary ARO piece. It's all firepower all the time but it's still very much Tunguska as it has the ability to guide a strike, war bands with smoke and combat jumping rents to come in and mess up people as it comes in from the side. The core of this list is similar to the last one, Vertigo's on, Security Core, but a different one, Heckler, Clockmaker, Puppet Master and Transductor Zones. The differences from the first list are minor. The Clockmaker is here to ensure Dima, Meteor and the Hollow Man stay standing. The Heckler has less hackers to back it up so the Fast Banda becomes a less of a priority but can still drop it to cause issues. But the Jammer with Surprise Attack is also a vital part of their kit. The fire team core, it's a pure core, so all the jobs are being done by five veteran light infantry, which is honestly not as good as the impure core, but it's 21 points cheaper, and that's almost another heckler, and I've used that savings to afford the Harris. The fuel back in the core is on BS 15 burst 2, EP plus DA or explosive, but it's only arm 1 and 1 wound. It's very fragile, but that's why I have a hollow man missile launcher in the Harris. The core's main job really is to be cheap orders and some ARO, after the dangerous stuff is dead. The last two things to mention here are the Meteor Zond and the Harris. The Meteor Zond first because it's an interesting piece. It's a combat jumping forward observer bot, basically identical to the Stempler Zond, but can deploy with airborne deployment. It can come in and do one of three things. Shoot things with its combi rifle, forward observe things to then be guided, or use the repeater to let the circuitate hacker do their job and set up the guided strike. It's similar to the heckler in its role but it's a less survivable one as once it's deployed it's got a bigger base, no mimeticism, no armour and no stealth. It can however still be a pickle to your opponent which is what all airborne troops aim to do. Finally we should talk about the Harris which is the main manoeuvre element of this list and will be doing the mission. It's a Holoman Harris with a missile launcher Holoman for a secondary ARO piece with a burst 2 missile launcher with structure and armour 4 before cover. The clockmaker can and probably should post their bot near the Harris to pick them up should they go down or get its status. It's mostly a secondary ARO piece to make up for the back being a bit flimsy. I also envision this Holoman being used to super jump and clear out things in cover or up in high places. The main combat element of this Harris is of course the Curza. It's big silhouette 5, BS 13, min minus 6 and burst 6 so it's basically how this list fights through most ARO pieces that Dima or Guided can't resolve. It's a big base but if you don't mind manoeuvring it, it should be fine. The Curza really helps the Harris get that plus 3 range band out to 48 inches with the Commu rifle and missile launcher leaving a little zone untouched. Final element of the Harris and an important one is the Stempler Zond. It, it can assist the fire team in other ways such as defense, close range burst 4 and clearing off camel for Dima to finish off. It's also a specialist so it's here to really do the budding pushing while the other two do the fighting things. And the Stemplar makes the Harris a bit cheaper and much better. Now looking back at this list and while it's nice I would probably go ahead and run it as is. I do feel like we're missing a second hacker, another midfield repeater and another specialist and honestly with that last one is something I feel like Tunguska is lacking. You have the Spectre who are costly, hecklers but then the jammer profile exists. So you kind of have to make do with secondary specialists like in the Harris or the Meteor. This is a shame but we do have some solid stuff we could swap in like the Hallman hacker and specialist operative which can be pretty quick and tussle in the midfield well enough. The hacker is one point more and would give the Harris 
hacking defense, but drop the secondary ARO piece. Hollow Man hackers are really solid with innate tin bots and pocket repeaters and could be an alternative build. With this list, I think you're using the Harris a lot, which is why it's in group one. It will break any ARO pieces and push the buttons. If this fails, this is where Dima comes in with Smoke Hour of the Meteors on to come in and set something up. It's a different vector to utilize to remove what you need. Once it's done, the Harris will control or try to control the midfield alongside the Heckler and Dima. Anyway, I'm more standard Harris plus core list that kind of exemplifies more of Tunguska's firepower with a mixed Harris while largely keeping most of Tunguska's goodies. It does also unfortunately show the expensive nature of Tunguska. I've titled this list Imp's Interesting List. It was created by someone on Discord called Imp who is an Aussie player, I believe, and I remember one time I or someone was asking about Tunguska and this came up. I believe they ran it at CanCon a few years ago or a local games day, but it looked different enough for me to save it and to show it off today as a bit of a wild card list. Why is it interesting? As you can see, no core, only attack, Harris, and a bunch of robots with merry problems. Now this was made a while before the Zeelandkrieger update, so I'd like to sit down and see what I could do to accommodate that. Maybe losing Mary or the most rised bounty hunter to gain Dima or a Zeeland. So let's break it down, starting with the core stuff, Clockmaker and two bots, because we have a lot of structure based units here with the Salamandra, Holoman, Stemblar, two Transnuxers, and a Vertical Zond. We have two Secure Tate, one Lieutenant and one Decoy, which is fine, 50-50 chance to get ganked, which is not bad odds. Two Transductors to act as ARO pieces alongside the War Corps. No hard ARO pieces except maybe the Salamandra, which we will get to. And finally, we have the load bearing units in the Heckler Vertigo and Motorized Bounty Hunter. These three in the Salamandra have the same uses as before, so I'm not going to repeat to myself. So what makes this an interesting list? Well, it's the bare bones nature of it just being a Harris tag and some midfielders. It's almost a vanilla list. The Hallman Harris is the main focus with the Salamander in Group 2. With the Clockmaker, that seems to be the intent. With the Group 2 tag, you're using it to enable other pieces such as the Harris or Motorized Bounty Hunter to move forward and do damage as you can just blast ARO pieces and stay in the drop zone thanks to the HRMC. Problems and her pitcher or Johnny Heckler who start in the midfield can also do this job by running up, lobbing repeaters, then spending orders on problems or the puppet master to lay down a spotlight, then guide to strike the target. I am noticing this is all in group two, so you've got to be smart with your orders here, or your main group is going to need to find another way to break out the DZ, which isn't impossible with the Harris, but it's not ideal. With that, let's discuss the Harris, which is the main maneuver specialist shooting element in this list. This consists of his Hollow Man Spitfire and two Stemplar FTOs. Burst 5 BS 13 2 wound Spitfire for 68 point is very cheap. I think a Teutonic Knight Harris Sans NCO is 67 point, which is wild since the Teutonics are very cheap with Impetuous. This Harris basically waits until it has an opening and sprints up to push buttons or shoot things. It can also hunt camo fairly efficiently with sensor, but that's probably not the main job of the bots. Their main job is as a specialist. Forward observing bots are fantastic little specialists that are whip 13, so absolutely fine to try and do the mission. These two and Mary I could see doing a lot of button pushing. Let's talk about Mary, who is doing a lot in this list, as she's going to do the risky hacking, as she is better at it than the Puppet Master, and has one of the two four deploying repeaters in the list. She's here to solve problems and create them for your opponent. I feel like she can do that with hacking to set up the vertical or lockdown tags and heavy infantry, but she also shares orders with other units that may also need it. Looking at the list, the two groups are set out to do two very different jobs. Group 2 is the scalpel to solve problems and enable Group 1. It's pretty important to understand that with Group 2 you have three choices and you need to pick one that turn and try it or swap to a new tactic very quickly. Although you can move pieces to Group 1 as the game goes on. A Group 2 tag only really needs one or two orders for fire support and ARO suppression fortunately. But that leaves four orders for either the Heckler or Mary or the Puppet Master to do anything. And don't get me wrong, the Heckler can make those four orders work, but if something doesn't go well, four becomes three, three becomes two, two becomes one, and you can quickly run out of orders. I think this list could be updated to include some warbands, dropping a bot and a transductor to get smoke and another way to leave the drop zone. I like this and I think we should try it. Final list and it's a reinforcement list and it was a hard one to make. Reinforcements is a tricky one, love it or hate it, 
and so I went for quality here, only really vaguely thinking about less crumple zones that I'll point out as we go. So main section first, it's the usual choices, an impure core as I went for the premium options here, Dima, Heckler, Mine Layer, Puppet Master and a War Core. The spice of this list is the Cursor Duo and NCO Grenzer. Why? Well I did say I wanted to try it. So as I said I went for more premium core for two reasons. I wanted the core to do everything I needed to do and if the Grenzer dies I don't massively care because Nomad reinforcements are really solid. Same core as the first list but instead of the decoy we have the comlink. As before Grenzers will do the ARO or some active shooting. One thing to consider here is when reinforcements drop do you want the comlink to head over to the reinforcement group and I think that will depend on if the Grenzers are alive as giving six sense to the inventors really helps drop zone defense. Although in saying that we don't have massive amounts of repeaters and you could save some points and downgrade to the Securitate hacker to improve your repeater network or do something else. That is an issue with reinforcements though. You can't really bring a missile bot and hackers to remove targets, so you need to play a bit more of a traditional panel-like game. So consider tweaking this core, but as is I think we do have enough to ward off heavy infantry. This moves us on to the unique thing in the list, the Cursor and Grenzer duo. So why this? Well, a burst 5 HMG with BS 13 and min minus 3 is usually enough to break out of a drop zone. We have smoke just in case, but the cursor in reinforcements will probably be able to punch through most things or at least force them down, and the Grenzer can also assist here. The pocket Grenzer, however, is here to maximize orders. We could take Jelena, but then we lose O12 prestige and that lieutenant order gets wasted. I think with the Grenzer, who is also a specialist with a visor for cards, you can get pretty efficient. With three orders available to the duo before really dipping into your main order pool, you can use the cursor to effectively break out the drop zone, then use the grinder to move the duo up and press buttons. So with reinforcements, you do need to know how and when your reinforcements are likely to drop. In this list, we have three or four pieces that will probably die. The two Grenzers, the Kurza, and probably Dima. So keep this in mind that they are semi-disposable, but you do need them alive to do the mission and win before your opponent drops. Moving on to the reinforcement group, this started as a double tag list, so as an attempt to bring the Aussie meta north, but I decided against that and went for a remarkably solid Nomad reinforcement group with a potential 7 order from 5 units, including a comlink. We have two Prowlers who both bring BS-12, min-3, tack-aware shooting specialist who is in the house with a Mars Spider paramedic with a gizmo kit and one other piece, be it a second Mars Spider or a second Prowler. With only a couple of orders if you want, you can absolutely reconstitute your main force and start repounding the opposition with the Kurza. Or you can take the absolutely bonkers Mars Spider and blend things with them. Alternatively, you can take Prowlers to go solo and just win the game with a really effective medium infantry that starts in the midfield. Overall, the plan is to use Dima and the Kurza duo to push up and try and play the mission and set up the board so your enforcements can either just hamper your opponent or set you up to win. And that was my video on four Tunguska lists. I think that you should try either as a long time player of Tunguska or a newer player. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. The army list codes will be in the description and remember to like and subscribe for more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.